All right, guys, welcome back to the Minecraft server on Church Mac. We got another episode of Minecraft Theology, and you'll notice I did a little bit of work while I, you guys were gone. <laughs> I actually, hint, hint, if you ever want to see me do all this work at my live stream, I did a ton of stuff. It is not done. The dining room area there is not done. I don't even have a railing up here. There's no actual ceiling in this room. You see the um, roof now, but this will actually just have a ceiling on it. So I got some work to do. This I'd like to make a little bit more, uh, I guess, user friendly. Um, if you look outside, it's a horrible mess because nothing's lit up. Um, but we're not going to go out there just yet because I want to show you this over here. We've got our bookcase. I'll probably put an enchanted table there. Um, and then this is just kind of sweeps around. We got an ice path here. I really like the idea of an ice path. And then down here, this is my new feature. I really, really like this. I have a storage system. It's not even close to done. Um, there will be a hopper sorter back here um, that I will have to do. And if you look up, there's actually an exposed lake that we, I absolutely love this. So we'll go outside here in a second to take a look at that. But this is the um, storage system for now. Um, have a whole bunch of some things, not much of others, so it just depends whatever it is that we have. And let's take a quick look from the lake. If we swing around to not get attacked by any bad guys. Um, if you notice, I have no armor right now. My sword is unenchanted because I might have died. This is really cool. I really like this idea, just being able to look down. I gotta fix that. So there's a whole lot of little fixes that still need to be done um, with this place. I'll definitely take care of that on the live stream. Whoa. And floating box. So got some some cleaning up to do. And if we go back this way, I'll actually probably have this done between jump, jump cuts too because I'm going to do a live stream in between here in a second. So we had talked about last time Faith and trials and works and we only cut touched on part of that we'll get into much more of that this episode um, kind of a continuation of the discussion as far as that's concerned I always like to just kind of check to see if there's any like this any um, blocks that are just free, free flowing here because of you darn guests um, ooh, another one. So if we come back over here, I also did a little bit more on a live stream. Um, and I've been doing live streams with, I record with Church Mag. I've just been doing live streams that I record on Saturday nights. Why is this missing? Weird. But if we come over here, you'll notice there's a big building here. That's not mine. But if you look at this thing, what does it look like? <laughs> so I um, have a little kelp um, smelting system over there so if we come in here this is the furnace area we have a little makeshift um, expedited furnace smelting here that you can use um, you can buy stuff and then I'm selling well not really selling these but selling furnaces and these dried kelp blocks which is great fuel and coal and then we have a furnace here. I really, 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 really love this design. Um, got some lava flowing for your smelting needs. It's not actually smelting. And then we got just heaps of coal over here for all the smelting that we could be doing in this building. And then we got a roof. This is actually half the height of what it actually is. Um, I don't have anything up there that I really need. I'm not going to use. So yeah. So I recorded some stuff when I we did the Church Mag podcast. I recorded or did some live streaming um, whenever I was Saturday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, that's what we came up with. Today, we are going to be building a water shop. So I go AFK fishing a lot, especially when I die and I lose all my gear. Um, by a lot, I mean I'm trying not to like be obsessive because it's actually quite annoying. Like right now, Mojave's on. No, I'm not saying anything mean about Mojave. He's just on. Here's all the supplies that we get when we AFK fish. Ooh, more water. Um, 
And so, like, if I wanted to sleep right now, I couldn't get rid of these bad guys. I couldn't get rid of the night's time because he's still awake. So, it's a little bit frustrating. But I want to make a fish shop right now um, from all the AFK fishing I've been doing. And if you notice, uh, when we come over here, there's actually another one of those um, conduit um, power converters. We actually, can, I think we have 10 of them now. So there's one around the entire base, like um, 10 of them are completely around. There's one right there, you can see. And it doesn't fill the whole island. Like if I put water right here, it would reach. But then if I put water right where that acacia tree is, it would not reach. So there's parts where it's dead and that's okay. The whole island doesn't need to have it. But I wanna build a shop that's actually above ground, has coral reef and all that fun stuff. Um, but, <clears throat> is when you go inside completely underwater and I marked it right here there's a conduit somewhere this way that literally reaches to right here so I figure my shop opening can be right here you come over you come into it and you swim around and you buy the stuff nothing big nothing crazy but what I do need to do is to get rid of these blocks I need to go get some coral um, and then I need to build like a scaffolding wall to put up a bunch of water and have a ton of source blocks so that we can build within this wall. I'm not sure how big I want it yet. So I'm gonna do a quick live stream to get rid of all this, to put up the wall, to go get the coral. Um, and then next time you see me, we'll actually do some design of the shop. So give me one sec, which will probably be several days on my end. All right, guys, so here's what I've got. First of all, this coral is here. I love this stuff. Um, if we dig down just for a second, there's a whole bunch of water under there because if you lay the coral without water, it dies and it turns an ugly gray color. So here's this, I love it. And we have our aquarium. There's no roof on it yet because I figured the roof of that will just be the roof of everything. So that thing is done as well we got a turtle in there we got a bunch of fish each one's different i think we're missing a couple we also have a puffer fish in there but it's gonna it's gonna smack us every time we go in there so i figured we would wait until we're almost fully done um i do want to put down let me throw this in here i do want to put up the walls so um i probably won't get to the actual design inside the aquarium today but we will do I will have that done next time the downside about all of this is that this sandstone is super uber expensive um, just because four sand only makes one sandstone and so then it becomes very expensive very quick um, let's just go ahead and let's see put this here because I know I'm going to be putting sandstone here um one two three do i go all the way up i think i do one two three four five four five is that five one two three four five one two three four five and then this is only going to be too high but it should be glass now nah, let's just do this i'm going to do that and then I forget how to get the creeper. Hold on a sec. Creeper sandstone is. Oh, it's the half slabs? Okay. Couldn't remember. So if we come in here. Um, just need to do this. And that, beautiful, and we'll just do that. Or maybe we do, oops. Maybe we do, this is getting really confusing now. That there, and gonna need to make a bunch of quartz. I don't know. 
You know what? Forget it. Let's just do this. Do that. And do that. Yeah. Something about that's got to change. I'm not sure what. Um, and then, of course, here in the corners, we'll build up. One, two, three, four, five. And we got to go along the top. One, two, three, four, five. Is that even? That is not even. Oh no. I didn't make that even. Two and three. <laughs> well. I, I, I'm broken. I don't know what to do right now. I mean, I do know what to do, but I don't want to do it. I could take this out, and it's just the one. Oh, man. Yeah, it instantly kills it. Nuts. All right, well, it is what it is, I guess. Put that there. Man, that's annoying. Guess it is what it is. Um, so then we'll put a door there. And then this is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four. And same thing here. Two, three, four. And then we'll just have to build across. All right. So you see here why it's so expensive. That was 16 right there. The sand is not necessarily easy to come by when you're trying not to destroy the ecosystem of it all. So the one question was initially down here, maybe making this birch. I actually like the contrast of this dark oak with everything. Um, so I'm definitely going to keep that. Um, and so then the question is here. We have the sand. I think I'm going to do this. This. And just kind of leave it like that. And then um, I think I'm going to make it white glass because it sticks out this way. I'm sorry, clear glass colorless glass oops oh did I run out of sandstone okay one two three I just needed to it's okay all right so we use that Now the question is, will I have enough glass? And you can see all the way in here, which is good. <laughs> um, I like the idea of, it feels very modern because of this. It feels very open because of this. I do need to cut down some leaves with some shears um, to give this place some hedges. I think the last server we had a uh, um, glass store and so this feels a little bit reminiscent of that oh I love this I actually really love this yes thank you 
Well, it's just me. Let me go sleep this out. Get rid of the darkness. Um, the kind of leaves I think I'm going to do is the oak. Just some simple hedges. I guess I could just do this, couldn't I? Oh, does this not have? Oh, I thought that had fortune or silk touch. This does. See if this is enough. So we've been talking, we've been doing this for a little bit. I did want to quickly talk with you guys about this idea of faith versus um, our works. One of the big concerns is there's faith. Faith without works is dead. Um, there's a big quote that happens: "Faith without works is dead." And there's this actual really strong discussion, theological conversation about which is more important to have. Um, faith or to have um, the actions to go with it because some would say that um, one is impossible to do it's impossible to be oops a christian without actually doing the stuff the doing the christian thing to do others would say i can go ahead and take this down others would say that you don't need it you can um, be just as much of a Christian on your deathbed saying yes to Jesus as anybody else and it doesn't matter if um, you had gone and evangelized and um, had discipleship and read your Bible every day those sorts of things and I think that the conversation itself um, leaves out the issue of Jesus in regards to grace, in regards to his own judgment and um, will. Um, I think that for most people, we're not on our deathbed. We're not the people that are just um, uh, making a last minute or impossible call. We're not stuck in jail like Paul was and unable to go. And even then, let's be honest, Paul was stuck in jail and many people came to know who Jesus was because of where Paul was at um, and we are not locked up and yet can we say for certain that we are doing everything that was asked of us so I think that I think that there is something to be said for the fact that maybe just need to do what we're supposed to be doing um, in the meantime uh, the conversation about oh I do need to put pickles down there too and now we're going to put a roof on, which is going to be quartz, and that includes over there. Um, so what does it mean to have faith with works? Um, let me pull up the scripture we were looking at before. It was James. It is James 2, and let me just read the whole passage. We're going to read more than normal um, that talks about this whole topic. It says, faith and deeds. What is good? This is James 2, 14, and several verses after. It says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes daily and daily food if one of you says to them go in peace keep warm and well fed but does not 
but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by actions, is dead. And I love that because we want to make this argument that it's one or the other that we need to be able to figure out. When in fact, this is actually saying, um, if you do not have faith by itself, it is not accompanied by actions, it's bad. And faith without um, deeds is also dead. So we need to have faith. We need to have the actions themselves too. And there's no one or the other kind of an option. We need to make sure that we are serving God as um, had been commanded of us. And that includes going and telling people about Jesus. And so I'm going to take the rest of this episode to tell you a little bit about how I came to know Jesus, because this is one of the ways that um, in America we've been able to talk about our faith is to actually talk about how we came to know Jesus ourselves too. So I was born in a Christian family and I have, um, maybe this is a little bit unusual because most people aren't born into a Christian family, but I have um, a story where I respected and loved my family and everything that they did. And at the same time, did not necessarily listen to them and everything that was going on in their life. Not necessarily that I was being combative or rude or mean, but it took me having a youth pastor that I um, respect and love and was one of my mentors when I got into ministry myself to say the exact same thing that my parents were telling me day in and day out. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, though there certainly was a better way of doing this as far as coming to know Jesus. Um, but the, the story of um, Jesus on the cross, the story of who he is and why he died for us, he died for our sins so that we could know who God is. Um, there is no other way to God except through Jesus. Um, we cannot say that because of a different God, we will go to heaven. And so at the age of 16, um, when I was mo- literally mowing my church's lawn, because my dad's a pastor, um, I was mowing our church's lawn. Um, I found myself, for it takes about an hour to mow that lawn, I found myself having this conversation of why am I holding out? What is it that I'm waiting for? I'd gotten back from church camp. And um, at church camp, they uh, it was a wilderness camp where you literally slept outside in tents. I knew nobody there except for my best friend in high school who went with me. He's actually the one that invited me. He also goes to church, um, actually was already Christian by that point and wanted me to go with him. And it was during that time where I just kind of, it wasn't that I didn't know who Jesus was because I could tell you every Bible story in and out. Um, It wasn't that I didn't have uh, a desire to because I knew at some point I wanted to become a Christian, Um, but there was this like resistance for some reason. And while I was out there surrounded by people I did not know and being the introvert I was, this was really tough for me. Um, We started to just talk about Bible verses and I didn't have distractions. Um, I didn't have video games. I didn't have people to go talk to or school to think about. I just had to simply sit with the Bible. And there was one verse we were, we were expected to memorize five different verses while we were out there. And the Bible verse that I memorized, um, the quickest, the first Bible verse I ever had memorized is Hebrews 11, one, which says faith, the substance of faith, that <laughs> faith is the evidence of I'm already messing it up. And the verse goes, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. I'm a very analytical person. And so for me, this verse resonated because I need to stop trying to come up with a great reason to have faith to become a Christian. Instead, just do it to actually just kind of get on with it for myself. And so I did that. I said, you know what? I just need to do it. Let's just go ahead and do it. And 
that's when I had said yes to Jesus. That's when I had become baptized. I became baptized with my dad. And that was the time where um, I actually signed up to enter my church as a member. And the rest is kind of history at that point. Um, my grandfather was also there. He was also one of the people that had baptized me. Um, I was one of the, probably the biggest highlights of my life was for that experience. Um, I can remember it to this day going out there and being baptized in this pond out there. Um, my declaration of I am a Christian, I am going to be part of the church, and I'm going to serve. I'm going to do the things that you're supposed to do to have these actions with faith to show the world who I am and what I stand for. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. What do you guys think about this discussion of faith with or without works? And what does this mean? I know we talked about trials last time, but what does this mean as far as faith and works for you guys? Um, Where do you stand on it? And um, how does this kind of impact your own thoughts? Stay in there, turtle. Um... Oh, I probably should just do it like this. There we go. I'm going to have to do it like this. I just thought about this. I'm going to have to have this be sandstone if I want it to match the top. Okay, that works. Um, I'd love to know you guys' thoughts. Um, Even as I tell this story, this is a very emotional story for me. And even as I'm telling it, I'm getting a little bit emotional about it. Uh, but I'd love to know your guys, what's your, if you are a Christian, what's your story? Oh no. What's your story as far as becoming a Christian? Um, and your baptism, all that stuff. I'd love to know. I'd love to hear that. And then for those that haven't said yes, what do you think is the thing that's holding you back the most? Um, is it a matter of you just don't believe it? Is it a matter of, um, The people that talk about being a Christian aren't doing the Christian things that they're supposed to be doing in the first place. Is it a matter of you're kind of like me and you need to be proven that it's all real Um, or just given a reason to finally become a Christian? I'd love to know your guys' thoughts in the comments, and I will catch you guys next time. See you later. Bye.